Welcome back to the commonly used Excel charts and functions video series. Today in lesson 22, we will learn the exact VLOOKUP. There are two types of VLOOKUP, the exact lookup and the range lookup. Today we are going to work through an exact lookup example. I have two tables here. The one on the left consists of hand bag orders, and we're going to have to find the unit price of each bag using this VLOOKUP table here that consists of different unit prices for handbag materials. VLOOKUP means vertical lookup, so the lookup table must be arranged vertically as shown above. I'm going to start by typing in my function and then selecting it. You can see that there are four different arguments in VLOOKUP syntax, and the first is the lookup value. This will be the materials, so I'm going to select the first cell in the materials column. Next is the table array, and this will be our lookup table. You're going to have to select your entire lookup table without the headers, so it'll look something like this. The next argument is the column index number, and it is the column of the lookup table that will be used to assign the value. In our case, this is the second column, which consists of the unit price. So you can see materials is column one and unit price is column two. So I'm going to type a two. The fourth argument and also the last argument is called the range lookup. Because our example is an exact lookup, we are going to choose the false exact match option. I'm going to put a closing bracket and then press enter. All right, let's drag the formula down the rest of the column here. Well, you can see there's some type of issue, so let's take a closer look at this cell. By double clicking on it, you can see our table array is no longer uh, covering the correct area. It has shifted down one cell, and this is because the VLOOKUP table was not properly referenced. Why? Well, this is because we used a relative cell reference instead of an absolute cell reference. We are going to have to go into our first cell and fix this. Remember, to change a relative cell reference to an absolute cell reference, you must press the F4 key. There we go, and then I'll drag the formula down again. And this time it's correct. All right, let's try playing around with this VLOOKUP function a bit more. One thing I like to do when learning Excel functions is to actually try to produce errors to ensure that I know how to use the function properly. So let's first look at if an exact VLOOKUP is case sensitive. I'm going to change this first cotton here to have a capital C, and then this first leather to be all capitals. Okay, we can see that there's been no changes in our order table, so it seems that the exact lookup is not case sensitive. Now let's try switching the order of the entries in the VLOOKUP table. So I'm quickly just going to paste in the new order. You can see that leather and cotton have simply switched places, but if we move to the left here, our unit price column has stayed the same. And that's because, if you remember, we included false as our fourth and final argument in our function. So if you specify false as the last argument, it does not matter which order you put the entries in in the lookup table. But if we did not have that false argument, and I'm actually going to delete it and then update the rest of our column, you can see that we start to get errors. So the other way to prevent this from happening is to sort the VLOOKUP table from lowest to highest or from A to Z. So I'm going to paste in the correct format of the VLOOKUP table from lowest to highest and A to Z, and you can see that our uh, unit price column will fix itself. All right, I'm gonna add the false argument back into our function here and then update the rest of the column. And then we'll quickly discuss why that argument is so important. All right, if we take a look here, we can see that the fourth argument, which is the range lookup, is in brackets, which means the argument is optional. You are not required to specify anything for that argument. For VLOOKUP, the rule is if you do not sort the first column in the lookup table from lowest to highest or A to Z, then you need to specify false as the fourth argument. This is sometimes hard to remember, and there's a simpler way of doing so. 
It is simpler to remember to sort the lookup column from lowest to highest or A to Z so that you can safely omit that optional false argument, which is the last argument. One thing to note is that whenever you are creating your lookup table, the first column will always be considered the lookup column, and the second column will be considered the to be assigned column. Either column can be characters or numbers. That concludes today's lesson, where we covered the exact VLOOKUP. In the next lesson, we will cover the range VLOOKUP. Thank you for watching and see you next lesson.